the last time I did this, I knew what I was doing. Right now, I have no idea what's going on at all. And like, I'm not even supposed to be here. I was supposed to graduate high school last year and go be a plumber. But like everyone else, nothing that was supposed to be happening to me right now is happening. Two years ago, when I sat down to write about myself and my art like I'm trying to do right now, I was right in the middle of the most transformative and vulnerable time I had ever experienced. I was coming out of a really long depression and I had been able to gain a lot of insight on what I needed to heal and change and how I was going to do that through my art making process. And I did it and it was awesome and I kept learning and working and had what was truly one of the best years of my life after that. I learned how to create space for everything I felt to fall into in the most honest way I could and how to take accountability for everything that came with being vulnerable and sharing that weight. It felt so good to feel so open. I was able to form relationships with the people I loved in a way I had never done before. I was enjoying and embracing how intense I was and how strongly I experienced everything I felt. At that time, I had never really felt more like me. So I had the best summer of my life, loved a lot, learned a lot, was super nice to myself and my mom. It was great. And then school started again and I really thought I was going to spiral. I thought that the stress of everything I wanted to accomplish that year, plus having to say goodbye to so many people I loved so much, plus coming down from the high that summer would all just make me like regress and freak out and I didn't know how I was going to handle it. But in a shocking turn of events, I handled it like a boss to be quite frank. Um, Portfolio Day immediately replaced every other thought or responsibility I had and it was so exciting. Um, sure, anyone who's ever like participated in Portfolio Day knows that mentally you will likely not technically be like stable, but there was this electricity running through all of us and for a good month or two we were so connected and so in sync and so excited for each other. And it was so awesome. It was just everything we had been talking about and getting ready for. I had just spent the whole year learning how to process my emotions and making a lot of work that I really loved. And I felt really awesome about my position. And I mean, it all came together. I think I blacked out for most of the big day itself, but I remember seeing my whole family walk into my space and try to figure out what the hell was going on. And I was so proud. I was so proud of everyone involved, obviously, but it was like a huge moment for me. My brother came and sat down at my desk with me and he held my hands and he started crying and he told me this means more to you and I than anyone else. As we looked at the giant photos of our mom crying and the horrifying sculpture of my dad sitting in the recliner next to us, I felt like I had really just completed a chapter and solidified the significance of the process and work I created that year. Sorry, Jacob, for telling everyone you cried and held my hands. I was ready after that to stop taking photos of my parents. I felt like they worked, they helped, they did what they needed to do. So I started to figure out what was next. Little did I know that at this point, the countdown to the end of the world uh, began ticking on down. So I decided that what I wanted to do was shoot very large groups of people. Um, so I made two lemonade stands and I loved it so much, so, so much. <laughs> this scene was inspired by this photo of me and a friend from middle school sitting outside my house at two lemonade stands. Um, I loved how the photos turned out and I remember thinking, okay, yes, like I should do more of this. Like this could be really good. Um, well, I still don't know because very quickly after that large groups of people were banished. Um, the first few weeks settling into quarantine, I was preparing myself for total mental collapse. I thought I was going to be crying how I used to and getting angry at myself and my family for no reason again. You know, I thought I'd be emotional due to all the historical evidence, including my entire body of work about how emotional I am. So imagine my surprise when it's suddenly, I don't know, a couple months later, and I feel like I can count on one hand how many times I had cried since then. Um, I was definitely depressed for a lot of this year, but the way my body and brain handled it 
was different than I've ever experienced before. I was non-existent. I have spent months and months doing everything I can to distract myself every second of the day to avoid processing anything that was happening around me. And I think it worked because when people ask me what I've been up to, I literally do not know. Um, I reach out to my friends and then don't answer their messages for two months by accident. School feels like a video game or like a podcast. Nothing feels real and like that's fine. Like so what? Everyone is burnt out and feels like that. but. I couldn't stop wondering why I didn't care more. At the end of last summer, I realized how much I had changed in quarantine and how different I felt if I really focused on it, but I don't know how I got there or what this new me cared about or felt like. It was a struggle to recount anything I did, never mind how I felt, so I tried my best to trace my steps a bit, and from what I can tell, this is my timeline from March 2020 to right now, kind of, kind of falls apart. So there I am in March, 17 years old, so in touch with my emotions, so hopeful for the next year, excited to graduate, excited to move on to the next big chapter of life. Um, the first week of quarantine, we found a box of hundreds of old family photos and I was feeling extremely grateful to see all these memories and bond with my family over them. I think it was the next week that I was very quickly hit with the realization that everything was about to be terrible for a while. That's when I stopped sleeping and went into autopilot. Little backstory, last critique I did before the pandemic was just me freaking out and telling my class that I can't sleep and mentally I was starting to feel a little unwell. So when this started, I just completely lost any regard for my well-being that I had left. Um, I was taking my ADHD meds at random hours so that I could stay up for literally days while accomplishing absolutely nothing. Somewhere along the line, I decided, mm, no, I actually will not be graduating high school this year, which was quite a choice. Um, my backyard and basement completely flooded one day. That was really cool. I developed a Red Bull addiction that is still very prevalent, raging on. Um, at one point I fell down my stairs and was bedridden for a while and then completely forgot about it until this moment right now. Basically I was treating myself very badly because I honestly wasn't even thinking about the fact that I existed and that my body and brain were clearly screaming at me to at least try to help myself. Um, somehow I just forgot to care and it was weird because I didn't necessarily feel sad of course, I miss my friends and going out and living, but part of not taking care of myself was not caring that I didn't care. I think I was just glad I wasn't miserable, per se. I mean, I definitely was, but I guess I figured out a way to ignore it somehow. Right after my 18th birthday, I faced the consequences of being completely off the fucking rails. I went on an Adderall bender, during which I didn't sleep for four days, drank three eight packs of Red Bull, blacked out in the back of an Uber, and then woke up many hours later in the hospital to a bunch of people thinking I was dead. I'm trying my best to not present this information in a way that makes it seem like that was just like a silly cute little moment because that was bad and scary and very much not advised. Um, right before this in May, I shaved my head. Uh, seemed like the natural progression from where I was at and that actually ended up helping me a lot. Um, the days after I was in the hospital snapped me back into reality a little bit. I was just feeling like an idiot, just dumb. Um, I was really mad at myself and I remember the thought process being, oh my god, like why did you do that? How did you do that? How did we get here? Um, and when I looked in the mirror, and my bald head and I was like uh oh hmm okay so we have some things to work out I guess huh and then all of a sudden it was like someone had stuck a hidden camera in the corner of my room and I was watching the last like six months of my life on tape and needless to say I was a little freaked out um I was kind of hysterical um I was trying to track my mental well-being over that time and I couldn't do it. 
I could not for the life of me even begin to truthfully say how I had been doing. Um, and that's when it kind of all hit me. And the one thing I was able to get emotional about in months was the fact that I hadn't been emotional in months. <sighs> I realized it had been like eight months since I made art or existed and I didn't know what to do. My first thought was like, okay, make something, like make your art, that's what helps you, it will help. Um, then I realized that I don't care. I don't care about the same things I did last time I was making art, I think. I didn't really know what I cared about. Um, and then I was stuck. Uh, and I didn't remember how to hold a camera, Never mind, like form a thought, you know? And it was weird, it was like I was ready to get myself back, but I had no idea how to do that or what that really even meant. And it was a really hard feeling to grapple with. And I sat with it for a long time. I wasn't having those instinctual emotional reactions that I had honestly based my entire being around, never mind just my work. And that sucked. Um, I would literally catch myself thinking about myself for like one second and physically shake the thought out of my head. I wanted to be present, but I was beginning to understand why my subconscious decided not to be because it was difficult. Um, I decided that I had to relieve the pressure of making new work, which was very freeing actually. And that day I posted this on my Instagram. Making art has been super, super hard for a while now. I've been really hard on myself about it, but today I was thinking about something and it made me feel a lot better. I'm totally new. I feel completely different than I did six months ago because I am completely different. My brain was turned off for a few months. I wasn't paying attention to all the things and changes happening inside and around me and I wasn't thinking about how anything was making me feel. Just overall really checked out of life, but it's okay because today I realize that I'm brand new and I get to learn all about myself again. The best work I've ever made is when I was first learning how to understand my emotions. I was so excited when I finally understood how to use art as a way to make real life changes for myself. I've been so upset for the past six months because I felt like I forgot how to do that. I was putting this expectation on myself to pick up where I left off with my work, but I'm not who I was the last time I was consistently making art. I'm excited that I get to learn about myself again, and I'm excited to look back at this post in a few months when I do. So I started learning again. Um, of course, I couldn't just turn everything back on. That was the issue. But I tried when I could to notice how I felt and to take note of the things that made me feel good or bad. Little steps. Um, I've always been one to utilize the notes app on my phone. I took a look one night at notes from over the years and it was very enlightening. So I made it my mission to write down anything that felt emotional or when I caught myself asking questions about how I'm doing or just anything important like something I'd want to remember um, and I did it. I added all these thoughts to the same note and I think the progression of thoughts over the five or six months that I did this was it's really interesting and emotional for me to look through and I would read them all to you but I think the whole time I was just trying really hard to come to what is now a very obvious conclusion I'm very lonely, um, obviously. I keep trying to push aside these feelings that I've been just chalking up to the pandemic because everyone feels like that, but it's like, oh my god. Hey, everyone feels like that. Like, that's probably important, you know? Um, I've been alone in my house for many, many days of quarantine, and it's not been good for me. People were everything to me, my people. I love my friends so much, which has made it so much worse to feel so disconnected from them. Um, I've isolated myself and my loved ones have done the same and it sucks. I have nothing to do but sit here and convince myself that I'm hated by everyone I love because they don't answer my calls. And normally I would think it's valid to feel like it's unfair to get ignored by my best friends, but I, I know they aren't ignoring me. Or maybe they are, but either way, so am I. So it's fine. Um, I've had a hard time juggling the guilt of not answering my friends and trying to make sure they know it has nothing to do with them while simultaneously freaking out and breaking down because I'm convinced they hate me. And if I'm being even more honest, a lot of my friendships have probably suffered a lot because of this time. There are friends that I haven't spoken to in months and I know it's okay, but there's also friends I haven't spoken to in months and I know it's not okay. Basically, I feel very alone. 
I feel abandoned by myself and my friends even though we're all still right here. And as soon as I realized this, I was back in the saddle. Boy oh boy, feeling things again. Um, but to be honest, it sucks. And I'm really, really sad. I miss what I had with my friends in the year after my breakthrough. There was a moment during that summer where we were riding on a whole different wave than anyone else. We were basically in love. And it was amazing. But, you know, the problem with times like that is that they are eventually over. Um, a few months ago, I was cleaning my room and I found some old disposable cameras that just so happened to be from that summer. I had no recollection of even like having these or ever taking pictures on them, but lo and behold, there was a whole lot. Um, and I was a wreck when I found them. I, gosh, I miss that feeling so bad. Um, my favorite line from my artist statement at the time was I truly feel like life is about caring so much that there's no other option but knowing it's for a reason. Maybe not knowing the in-between parts yet, but knowing you care and knowing it's important. I thought about the person who wrote that and who took these photos I found and I remembered who I was a little bit more. So I looked at the photos one by one and I wrote down the first thing that I thought of when I saw them. It wasn't intentional, but as soon as I was done, I realized that I had just done exactly what I'd been dying to get back to. I had an instinctual emotional reaction and I acted on it by making the work. I made work that helped me with my real life issues and you know what, I have not done it again since and I feel so okay about it. These have helped me realize that I'm not going to be able to rush this healing process. Um, I have to put the pieces together as I find them and that's okay. I've been acting like me again, plus more. I crochet now, a lot. Look how many there are. This one's cool. I redecorated my room. I listened to old songs that I thought I'd forgotten forever. I also cry and get upset and freak out and it's fine. The difference is that I know I can help myself again. Last night I was inconsolably anxious so I got up and I went to my mom's room and I asked for a hug and allowed myself to feel like a little kid again. Everything is still hard. But it's good to know I care enough to do things like that to make it easier. I just read this back and I'm very pleased with how dramatic it sounds. All I want is to be dramatic again. Um, I'm always going to be the way I am, but it's not always so simple to be me. Sometimes I won't exist and I'll try to avoid that at all costs, but I know I'll always figure it out again. So yeah, I feel good, mostly. I miss my friends really bad. Text your friends back or give them a call. Don't worry or worry more, depending on which part of this you related to the most. Don't mix Adderall and Red Bull. Um, and gosh, please take care of yourself. Thank you for listening. That was the one.